Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoking the Emergencies Act for the first time since the law was passed in 1988 in response to the now weeks-long trucker-led protests against COVID restrictions that have jammed streets in Ottawa and blocked key crossings at the U.S.-Canada border. Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland saying banks can immediately freeze or suspend bank accounts without a court order and without fear of civil liability. The move expands money laundering laws to include crowdfunding platforms and cryptocurrency transactions. And joining us now to discuss is Abby Deshman, Director of Criminal Justice for the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Hi there, Abby. Thanks for joining us. So this is the first time the Emergencies Act has been invoked since it was passed in 1988. Can you tell us about the act and the power it gives and when it's supposed to be invoked? Yeah, absolutely. This is extraordinary legislation. As you say, it's the first time it has ever been used, and despite the fact that we've been living in a pandemic uh, for two years and have had lots of emergency acts invoked. Uh, the federal one has never been used. Um, and it gives extraordinary powers to government. It concentrates power in the executive branch. So that is the prime minister and the ministers. And they are able to authorize emergency orders uh, that really will bypass other laws, other um, checks and balances on uh, law enforcement actions that we would expect, um, and to do so without the authority of Parliament for at least two days. Um, so it's, it's extraordinary powers, and it is intended to be reserved for real national emergencies. So if you look at the legislation, it talks about things like war, um, national pandemics that can't be handled by the provinces. Uh, there is a public order section of the legislation, uh, but it is supposed to only be used when um, the provinces can't deal with the situation and uh, existing laws and powers are insufficient. And that's really um, where we have concerns about uh, the use of this legislation in this circumstance. We certainly have protests across the country. They are extremely disruptive, um, particularly on the border and uh, in Ottawa. But we actually have seen uh, local police very effectively uh, use their existing powers and laws um, to police these protests. So you don't think this high threshold has been met? No, we don't think the high threshold has been met. And, you know, it's high for a reason. It's high because the powers are extremely concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, it is a check and balance on um, the use of this legislation. And, and we don't think that um, we've met it in this case. So I understand uh, there's also an expansion of anti-money laundering laws to freeze bank accounts, crowdfunding platforms and Bitcoin transactions. How is the government able to do that? Like what kind of due process invol is involved, if any? Yeah, so if this happens under the um, Emergency Act, and we don't have the details of the orders yet, but these are the types of things uh, that are being contemplated, um, there won't be much due process. Uh, it really does seem like uh, they are headed towards authorizing the freezing of assets um, based on information that you know somebody has supported uh, one of the protests or the blockades. And, you know, we don't have any definition of support. So that could be a very low, you know, $5 donation. It, it could be giving somebody a ride um, to drop them off at a protest. Um, and we also don't have any indication of what are the limits are on seizure of assets, uh, freezing of bank accounts. Is it all of your bank accounts? Is it only the amount that you donated? Um, none of that um, is clear. But we do have some precedent uh, under terrorism financing restrictions that, you know, is very broad powers to freeze the assets of people who are designated as terrorists or terrorist organizations. So if that's the sort of thing that's being contemplated um, in this case without any judicial oversight, uh, without any warrants, um, it is very broad and far reaching powers. Is there any way to appeal or dispute this decision by the prime minister? Yeah, so there's a couple mechanisms, um, both democratic and legal. Uh, so the first democratic mechanism is within two days of any specific order um, coming out from the federal government, it does have to go before parliament. So parliament does have a chance to look at the order after it's already come out and, and been in effect for up to two days. Um, so that is one democratic check and balance that's built into the legislation. Uh, and then there, there are some legal recourses, um, but it's not, uh, there's no inbuilt appeal mechanism. You could mm -hmm. try to launch a review of the legislation or the use of the legislation 
um, or the constitutionality of what's been done, but there's no easy judicial recourse. I mean, just one final question before we wrap, but does this establish a dangerous precedent for Canada? Absolutely. Um, I'm quite concerned. You know, we have thousands of protests across this country every year, the vast majority of which are entirely peaceful, but many of which are very disruptive and some are disruptive on a national scale. Uh, it is extremely concerning to see emergency legislation across the country being used to address um, what are extremely disruptive, but for the vast majority of them, ultimately peaceful protests. So uh, we need to be able to live in a country where we have a really high tolerance for disruptive protests. That's part of being in a democracy. Um, and we also need to uh, rely on the democratic mechanisms and laws that are in place in order to find out what are appropriate limits to those protests.